Come on, someone walk into this. Come on. <laughs> oh god, he's gonna feel that one. Hey, how's it going, guys? Back with another team for those two tips and tricks, and uh, this time for the sniper. Before I start, I just want to say I'm not going to cover the aim aspect of the sniper. There's already some really informative and great guides on that. But instead, I'll cover things you can do in Team Fortress 2 specifically to make it much more easier and make you do better as a sniper, besides just improve your aim. Because my aim really hasn't improved much uh, since months or even years ago, but my sniper game has improved dramatically, solely because I'm much better at keeping myself alive and put myself in positions which make it much easier to aim and hit people. Okay, so if you look at any sniper tips video, they'll all tell you to have a good quality mouse and large mouse pad, pick a sensitivity which you're comfortable at, and to keep practicing, keep getting those hours on TF2 because the pro snipers that you see, I guarantee they've got over 100 hours in Sniper. And they're exactly right, you know, to sniper in any game, these tips are the most important. But to be a good sniper on TF2, you have to know things that are specific to TF2. And that's what I'm going to cover. Because perfect aim alone just isn't enough. It's crucial that you know how to deal with spies, techniques for dealing with your class, how to stop being counter sniped, and positioning in good sniper spots. And those are things that I'm going to cover today. I'll go over another huge topic which is the equipment in a later video. But just to keep this video concise and not not to go on for too long, I'll just discuss these four things today. So I'll firstly start with dealing with spies, which is the number one threat when playing sniper. You will get killed by them a lot, and it's not just as simple as equipping the razor back and never getting backstabbed again. Because a decent spy can make killing with his revolver just as simple as killing you with his knife. So the first thing you want to do is never stay too far away from your team. You don't want to be in the right in the middle either because you are a fragile class and you are more effective a long distance away from your enemies. But if you're camping far behind your team, you're making it really easy for spies to kill you and get away undetected. A great position for a sniper to be is in the back, but not too far away from your team, especially friendly pyros. That way it makes it very difficult for a spy to tag you and then escape. A pyro can easily kill him, or a scout can easily drag him down. Playing spies is like playing scout when it comes to choosing your fights. You want to get people who are vulnerable and alone so you can escape afterwards. So many times when I play spy, I can easily kill the sniper, but I know when I'll die because the sniper is well protected by his team and I'll just move on and try and find a better target. Also, make sure you're choosing wise positions to snipe from, a place that'll make it difficult for a spy to backstab you. I have a clip here of me sniping on bad water, I've climbed on top of some rocks that would require a spy to take 5 or 6 seconds just to get in a position to backstab me. This is going to make him very obvious to my team, and even give me the chance to kill him if I'm quick enough and scoping. Even for him to use his revolver on me from this position, it's still very risky, because he has to come very close to where my team are, and if he doesn't manage to get those shots off quick enough, or choose the wrong time to actually break out of disguise, he could get him killed. Another way to protect yourself against spies, is don't be scoped in for too long, and look behind you have to take a few shots. It's very easy to keep sniping, especially if you've picked up a few kills, if your shot is fully charged. But so many times when I play spy, I'll see one or two snipers on a ledge just scoped in, away from the team, and not checking the surroundings. It can be so simple for spies to kill you if you like this. Another great tip is to constantly switch between sniping positions. If you're sniping a very obvious spot, such as the ledge on Frontier, you will get killed. For a spy, I'll make sure I check these spots, just so I can pick up easy kills. So constantly changing positions really makes it a lot more safe, and less likely a spy will actually find you. Also, consider using the Razorback with lots of spies on the enemy team. The Razorback really does deter spies from killing you if used properly. I used to think, you know, great, now I can't be backstabbed by a spy, but a few quick shots from any revolver and I'll be killed just as quick. I guess this can be true. But after playing spy for a while, I feel like it's only for snipers that aren't following these tips. The Razorback makes it so that a spy will have to break out with disguise and be momentarily vulnerable when he's killing you. But if a sniper is near his team and constantly aware of spies, it can make life really difficult for a spy, especially if you're using the Year Eternal Reward, as they won't be able to get disguise off you and have to lose the current one. And they won't be able to get any help off you if you're using the Con of the Skunai. When playing Spy, occasionally a Razorback will be the deciding factor whether I killed the sniper or not, just because in some situations, you don't have enough time to kill them with your revolver and then get away without being tracked down. Spy's the most played class, and if I see a sniper that is following these tips, especially have the Razorback on, I just want to tap them and I'll move on to see if it's an easier target. If you're still struggling with Spies, play Spy for a bit and learn how they operate. Once you do, you'll be able to defend against them much better. Alright, moving on to class specific techniques. This might not seem that important, but one of the best ways to deal with each enemy is crucial. I won't talk about fighting against other snipers just now, as that kind of requires more detail. The first thing you should always try and do is kill the medic. Now a good medic will always make himself hard to hit, jumping around, hiding behind walls, corners, and also ducking behind his patient. But taking out the medic, especially one with full charge, can be worth more than 3, 4, or even 5 kills. And if he takes a while, or even if you die in the process, it's still very much worth it. So always prioritise the medic. 
Next up is the Engineer, and a Turtle Engineer is quite easy to kill. The low health and usual style of play means you can kill the Engineer with ease, and then proceed to chip away at his sentry. One technique I like to do is if the Engineer is out of sight, I'll hit his sentry until it's on low HP, and then wait for the Engineer to be turned. Let him start to repair it, and then I'll just kill the Engineer. One thing to bear in mind is that a fully charged shot can do 150 points of damage to a sentry, more than a direct hit or lock and load, so you can really take down a sentry fast if you coordinate an attack. The heavy is your target for the sniper, but his high HP means that one headshot might not be able to take him out. What I like to do is fully or partially charge the shot, and wait for the heavy to rev up. As soon as he does, kill him before he can fire. Alternatively, if you're in close quarters, or he's already firing at your team, it might be an idea just to quickly get that 150 damage headshot off, and then finish him with uh, a second if necessary. Now spars can be very tricky to deal with. If you manage to spot one with your scope, remember that the hitbox in your shadow doesn't actually change when the disguise, which makes them quite difficult to accurately headshot the spy. What I like to do is fully charge the shot and just hit them in the center of the target. It'll do more than enough damage to kill them, and it's a lot more reliable than guess what the head is. If you happen to engage in a melee fight with a spy, it's very difficult. They can trick stab you or feign a death. If you have the Jurati, it's an amazing way to deal with them, but will make it more likely for them to attempt to trick stab in desperation. Always be cautious when chasing them around corners or upstairs, and don't make any sharp movements in any direction. The best way to defend yourself against trick stabs is just play spy. You learn the signals to give off before they attempt to stab. Now another huge counter for a sniper is actually another sniper, so it's important you know how to deal with them. A great way to practice is actually on MG servers, where you can just 1v1 for another sniper and focus on your skill. A lot of great snipers do this to warm up for a competitive match, or just to hone their skills, and it's a great way to learn actually how to go against other snipers in pubs as well. If you're not very good as a sniper like me, you can just learn of other players. Anyway, my friend Inu and I jumped into the server and he kicked my ass, but I just wanted to show you things he does on the play, because he's a really great sniper. So the first thing you'll notice is he actually moves and strafes around a lot. This is because it stops me being able to accurately predict where he'll be. He also tends to wait until I scope him first, as this means he can scope him with a lot more precision. Also, when he misses, he'll jump or duck or strafe around a lot just to make sure he doesn't get killed on the counter. He also uses Jurati uh, just to make me disorientated and affect my aiming. Also, don't be afraid to go for the body shot on light glasses, especially snipers. If you know they're on low HP or if you're fully charged, doing 150 damage to them is just as effective as doing 450 damage to them with a headshot. It's just more reliable and safe. Also, if you do win the battle, Make sure you move position and anticipate them counter sniping you once they respawn. Most likely they'll have the advantage as they can always flank you from the side, so watch out for that. Now positioning really isn't that important. You might think snipers should stick to little places on the edge of the battlefield, and whilst this is true, you, you really want to keep moving and you don't want to stay in the same place for too long, especially if you're using rivals that can be traced, such as the Machina or Hitman's Heatmaker. Most of the time, the best positions for a sniper are with his team, fighting at medium to long range. Although, finding those places where the enemy is going to either be running directly at you or away from you makes sniping exceptionally easier, it takes a lot more variables out of aiming, so you can kind of get a sense of what I'm talking about. I'll show you my favourite sniping position on Frontier. Once they cap the second point, this spawn opens up, and you can shoot directly as they come outside. You can always retreat up the stairs if something goes wrong, and this spot is really underused, and it's one of the easiest places to snipe from, because they run straight forward and it's easy as hitting someone standing still. Alright, so I think I've covered a lot in this video, so I'll end it here. I'll cover this equipment another time, just because I don't want to have these 10 or 15 minute long videos. A lot of these tips came from my friend who's an amazing sniper, so special thanks to you. This video took a really long time to make and hopefully you've gotten something out of it. Please like and subscribe as it really helps me out, and more importantly comment any questions you have because I'd love to hear from you guys too. Take care guys.